This is Patrick Christie's Tonight. We're on GB News. Coming up, I will bring you the very first of tomorrow's newspaper front pages. They are hot off the press with my top panel. But first, unbelievable scenes in the heart of London today as blood-soaked horses who have escaped from the household cavalry rampage through the streets. After five horses broke free during a training exercise, they did cause chaos. They smashed into vehicles and pedestrians and four people were being treated for injuries in hospital. But amazingly, two of the spooked animals actually managed, get this, right, to gallop nearly six miles far into East London. I mean, seriously, it's, it's quite the feat, actually. So all the horses have since been recovered. Thankfully, they are receiving medical attention as well. But the incident has now raised questions about the safety and ethics of using animals in the military, especially, I think it must be said, in very busy, built-up areas like our capital city. Well, I'm delighted now to welcome the co-founder of Animal Rising, Kidby, and defence analyst, Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Crawford. Uh, both of you, thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. Uh, Dan, I mean, I think I can guess your answer on this, but, I mean, you know, do you think that this is, this is maybe the end of the line now for workhorses like this? Yeah, well, I mean, these have been on their way out for a long time now, really, haven't they? I mean, I think what I want to stress is that these were dramatic scenes that we saw today, and shocking scenes, and I'm sure many people sitting at home were highly distressed to see what was happening. But this isn't out, out of the ordinary. During William and Kate's wedding, we saw horses breaking loose and bolting. We saw that happen happening at the Queen's funeral. Um, a, a few years ago in Hyde Park, a horse got their leg caught in a gun carriage and broke their leg and then was killed by the military. Um, so as much as this has been, you know, this has cut through into the media today, mm. um, really want to stress this is this is common, common in, in this right. um, unjust practice. OK, and obviously you, you'd ban it. I, I'm just going to ask you now, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Crawford, I mean, all these horses well looked after? I, it was, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it was quite upsetting, really, I think, today, seeing, seeing, seeing those horses you know, charging through the capital city, obviously spooked, one of them bleeding. No, absolutely. I mean, I don't think anybody would be delighted to see um, uh, animals in distress uh, running about because, obviously, they've been spooked. And it is, I mean, it is quite shocking to see a, a white horse covered in blood running through uh, the streets of, of, our, of our capital city. I, I would just say that, um, and, I, and, I per, and I do really uh, understand and I'm sympathetic with the arguments against the uses of horses, but they are purely for ceremonial purposes. And you only have to look at them uh, to realise how well looked after they are in terms of how they're housed and trained mm. and the veterinary services that, that there are provided for them. So I think that it's not quite a, a sort of black and white issue. Uh, there are sort of uh, grey issues, if you like, to be, to be dealt mm. with here. But in the past, of course, horses have been a fundamental part of uh, the military endeavours. And in the First World War, for example, Britain alone uh, lost uh, nearly 500,000 horses killed in that conflict. But we must remember that we also lost nearly a million men in that conflict. So it's not quite cut and dried. OK. All, all, all right. Dan, I mean, look, they are ceremonial. They've got a purpose. Uh, and they are, clearly, I would imagine, for the most part, very, very well looked after. What, what would you do with them all? You know, they might not even have a life if they, uh, if they weren't, weren't there for that purpose. Yeah, well, I, I want to talk through like what it means to be a cer ceremonial horse. Um, so these are um, in unnatural environments for horses, forced to do unnatural things. They're, they have very rigid, highly controlled movements that these horses are forced to make. And how is it that that happens? Well, you have a rider sitting on their back holding reins, and those reins are attached to metal bits that go into their mouth and tug very painfully, very severely at the horse's mouth which forces them to then respond with the movements that the rider wants. So this is a very uncomfortable, painful, stressful experience for horses. And you add into that the fact that they are surrounded by, by onlookers, by people looking at what's happening. Um, you know, horses are prey animals. Like, um, 
small things that happen can spook them, can scare them. So you have the pain that they're experiencing, All plus right. the, you know, the, the havoc off the streets. And it's, it's clear that this just needs to stop happening. All right. Um, look, Stuart, do you think Dan's been a bit soft there? Stuart? Sympathetic. Yeah. I'm sympathetic to what he's saying. But um, it's, it's a two-way street. Uh, uh, the horses ha have been part of, uh, uh, have coexisted with human beings for uh, centuries, thousands of years, and that will continue. And they're not exploited in the same way as they used to be. But they are extremely well looked at. And you, I mean, I, I come back to my point. You yeah. only have to look at the houses, uh, sorry, the horses that the household cavalry uh, rides in London and elsewhere in ceremonial duty to see how well looked after they are. And so I think that um, we have to be cognizant of the fact that to a certain extent they are being exploited, but they're also extremely well looked after. Yeah, OK. I, I mean, Dan, look, they're not, they're not show jumping, OK? They are not racing in the Grand National. They're not actually being ridden into battle, all right? I, I mean, they, for, as far as you can tell, you know, these horses are surely absolutely fine, aren't they? I mean, well, they might enjoy it a bit more. They might have more stimulation than if you just put them out of pasture. Well, these horses spend most of their lives um, in very small stables, standing still. Even as part of the military practice, they have to stand still for very long periods of time. You know, we've seen these horses today. They've run, they've run like five or six miles. Horses, the image that we have of horses, the, that, you know, that we are told in our storybooks of horses running in open fields. Um, and, mm. you know, instead we're met with images like this. It's like, I think what we really need to do is take this quite shocking, dramatic incident and use it as an opportunity to really reevaluate our relationship with animals and see right. what is it, what is the way that we do want to coexist with them. Yeah, all right, Stuart. If their only purpose really is ceremonial, then what's the point? I mean, it's a living ornament, then, isn't it? Well, well, yes, it is. It's part of the British tradition, and uh, and many people would say a, a good thing mm. too. I think the more interesting question might be in the light of what's happened in London recently is the use of horses by the police force to enforce law and order. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where I think that there is a, a great utility in using them. And, and of course, famously up here in Scotland, uh, they have been used on numerous occasions for crowd control at football matches between uh, our two rival Glasgow uh, football teams. So I, I think they have utility. I think they're useful. But I do think they're well looked after. And within the context of the fact that they are being used by humans for a purpose. Um, I, I think basically we, we've got it more or less right. Yeah, OK. All right, guys, look, good stuff. Thank you very, very much. Great to have you both on the show. That was the co-founder of Animal Rising, Dan Kippy there, and Defence Analyst, Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Crawford. Oh, can be honest with you, I'm unusually, I'm unusually split on this issue. Unusually split on it. I, I really didn't like looking at that today with the horses running through the city. I, I thought, oh, but then I think, well, you know, it's part of tradition, I suppose, and they do, they do serve a practical purpose. They're not just living ornaments, as I was saying there. But anyway, look, coming up, coming up.